Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for all your likes, shares, and subscribes. Today we'll begin the exaltation and debilitation of Jupiter. Jupiter is an expansive planet. We'll talk about that more. But just on a personal note, I hope you're doing well wherever you are. If you're sensitive, you're feeling all these energetic shifts, yes, in the vibrations which is going on. And now it is like pulsating more and more. It's like very high sometimes. It's sometimes very low. So it's an expansion and contraction going at some other level, which I don't even understand anymore. <clears throat> but hey, we got to go with the flow, right? That's the best. Grounding, little meditative exercise. I use the mantras and everything else to center myself. And so you must understand where I come from with respect to these Vedic Astrology. Vedic Astrology, once I started touching it, my background is of an automation and control engineer. I've worked in, for 33 years in different countries around the world. This has given me an experience and perspective of different people around the world and how we function, how we think about things. But when I came to the esoterics of this Vedic Astrology, it's like, aha! There's lots of aha moments, right? Lots of epiphanies. So when I speak of awakening, in my experience and in my well experience and learning, my hope is that these videos will provide you that kind of understanding. This is why I bring presentation style ones. My engineer's brain, forgive that. I like to have things shown in a sort of clarity manner, like a presentation, like how we do at office, right? I used to be a trainer once upon a time also. So that's the best way to capture an understanding of how things look, how things work from a different perspective. And even Vedic Astrology I bring here, which I call Conscious Astrology for a reason, because once you should know your chart, once you get into these esoteric subjects, once you see your Vedic Astrology chart and say, ah, okay, this is why I'm having these kinds of issues with these people. Oh, this is what my talents are. Oh, this is where I should be going, not this way, but this way. That's the epiphany it creates. That's the understanding it creates. That's the awakening it creates. Awakening is not necessarily sitting like a guru with a big beard somewhere. It's not that. In this new energy, as the earth shifts, as the kundalini of the earth shifts, as the akashic shift of earth occurs, and I have spoken about akashic shift of earth in the videos, if you want to watch it, we are collectively and individually moving towards an energy which is more soft, tender, feminine, accepting, nurturing, caring, like the mother. Think of the mother energy. We are moving towards a more balanced earth. From a more masculine earth where the feminine takes over and rebalances that masculine energy. And it is occurring at the physical level. That's why we are finding lots of physical shifts. Our bodies are shifting. Why? Because the earth is shifting. Yeah. And I have spoken about this, I'll continue to speak of it as I get some more insights into it through this channel. But let's understand it from a Vedic astrology perspective. Astrology offers tools, right? It offers us tools for our self-understanding better. So use these tools and my hope is that all you young people out there because the shift is going to be brought about strongly by the young people of the planet who are waking up in this energy of shift in this time period we have. All those born between 1987 and now are waking up faster because the shift energy of the earth is directly like they are born as babies into it. So it's very powerful for them. They are driven from inside, from their subconscious levels. It's very powerful. So let's get into this and let's analyze one by one what Jupiter and Saturn are. Saturn I will do in the next one. Jupiter, let's take in this one. So thank you once again and be safe wherever you are. Let's talk about Jupiter now. So you see the table of friends, enemies and neutral. And I've spoken of this more than before. But let's just to recap. What is a friend? What is an enemy? What is a neutral with respect to a planet? 
every ascendant is governed by a particular planet. Jupiter in this case is Pisces and Sagittarius. It's the ruler of both these signs. So Pisces and Sagittarius will feel this strongly because it's the Jupiterian view or the lens from which it is perceiving all the rest of the planets or rest of the houses or houses and lords governing those houses. Okay, That's the principle. Now what does Jupiter do? And I'm going to personify it like before because personification helps us understand what is going on with respect to real life. Planets don't do anything by themselves. They are just pieces of objects in the sky. We are the living beings here who are personifying that aspect. Yes, it comes through us as human beings. So, <clears throat> Jupiter sees Sun, Moon and Mars as friends. It sees Mercury and Venus as enemies and Saturn it is neutral towards, it doesn't really care much. Although it must be noted that Jupiter and Saturn are opposite kind of functioning modes. Jupiter expands everything it touches, whichever house it sits in, Saturn contracts it, Saturn makes it shrink, Saturn reduces it. One is an expander and one is a reducer, so they are opposing in the ways of functioning, but they are not necessarily inimical to one another. Okay, it's neutral. Saturn is neutral to Jupiter, Jupiter is neutral to Saturn, as you can see in the table. However, one thing you should note here you see enemy Jupiter as enemy to Mercury. Well, let's see Mercury. Mercury is neutral to Jupiter. This is how it plays out. So, if a person has is the Gemini or a Virgo, he will not mind the person with the wisdom, the ascendant in Jupiter, the person who is bent upon higher wisdom, higher learning, higher knowledge, Pisces and Sagittarius. He will not mind it. But the person who is wise thinks Mercury, this fellow is all the time just intellectual. He is at a lower level of knowledge. He is judging, by the way. There is nothing wrong with Mercury. It is just that Jupiter judges Mercury and judges Venus, the person who's artistic capability and says, ah, I don't care about this kind of what is the meaning in doing all this music, art, paintings, etc. Jupiter is judging there. And now as we move into these new energies, we need to reduce and it will be reduced is what I'm getting. The judgment energy that goes around in our cultures and throughout the world, right? We need to move from judgment to acceptance. This is the transcendence from masculine to feminine. The feminine is more accepting, masculine is more judging, like a law, like a sitting like a judge on things, right? So let us personify Mr. Jupiter. What does Mr. Jupiter do? Jupiter walks into a room or a bar and says, I like that woman who is confident and leader-like, like the sun. Sun is leader-like, right? Leo. Jupiter also says, I like that woman who seems more emotionally sensitive, moon, or even that woman who is all action-oriented, Mars. Jupiter also thinks, I would prefer not to engage with that intellectual, shrewd fellow, Mercury, or that musician or artistic or a painter kind of a person, Venus. Jupiter also thinks, I do not mind that very serious kind of a guy, serious and quiet types which is Saturn, right? This is the way Jupiter looks at things. This is the way a Saturn, sorry, Jupiterian ascendant like Pisces or Sagittarius looks at the people around them, okay? Now let us see the next aspect, how it plays out in the two ascendants, Pisces and Sagittarius. So let's begin with Sagittarius. Sagittarius, number nine, is now as you can see in the first house okay and then it goes to capricorn aquarius pisces and so on all the way up to house number 12 which has got scorpio this is the way vedic astrology looks at it i'm just saying the way it is the whole sciences okay so jupiter as you see in that box over there the sun moon and mars are friends typically we tend as human beings to focus ourselves on the friendly areas or the enemy areas of life. That's why I'm focusing on that. Okay. Also keep in mind, 
whatever neutral ones you see even if the planets are exalted there you don't tend to look at it much you should try to understand it this way this is why we ignore our talents when our friends say hey you are talented in this area house number two or house number three if saturn is sitting in house number three it's very exalted it's in aquarius but we tend to ignore it you see don't ignore your talents or planets which are sitting in neutral houses if they are especially exalted focus on that very very important <coughs> now so jupiter sitting here in sagittarius because it's a fire sign okay it looks at house number four which is the house of jupiter itself so it's friends with itself obviously it looks at house number five where aries sits because it is ruled by mars and jupiter is friends with mars as you can see and it looks at it as friends it looks like house number eight okay which is ruled by moon because jupiter is friends with the moon this looks at this house and says i like change and transformation i like mysticism and occult because this is a house for that it looks at the ninth house and obviously sagittarius being sagittarius it is traditionally the ninth house it is looking at the house number nine which is now ruled by leo or the sun or the ancestral energy or the soul energy and it brings in friendship meaning Sag sagittarius people are intent on having leadership like qualities in the area of philosophy wisdom etc they want that that's where they want leadership of wherever house number five falls you want leadership okay now so is the 12th house you can see 12th house is also marked as friends there why because it is ruled by mars and jupiter is friends with mars now let's look at enemies because that's also an area with the challenge areas for a sagittarius ascendant the challenge areas are house number two why because venus rules it taurus and libra which is sixth house and eleventh house so they have a problem with work and work related challenges will be sagittarian ascendant challenge in life because these are the houses ruled by venus that's why it becomes challenging yeah <clears throat> and also the houses ruled by mercury which is house number two sorry house number three and house number six which is the spouse and the work areas so six seven ten and eleven these areas of house become challenging for the sagittarius ascendant now let's look at pisces let's see how this plays out in the pisces ascendant pisces is house number 12 now number 12 has landed as you can see there in the first house yeah so how does pisces perceive this jupiter's friends enemies and neutral so neutral means uh, Pisces ascendant really won't care about what is sitting in Aquarius and what is sitting in Capricorn which are these two houses house number 11 and house number 12 although you should as I say pay attention if some planets sitting there are exalted in nature if Saturn is sitting in both these houses it becomes exalted in its own sign but Jupiter doesn't really care Jupiter cares about which one for Pisces ascendant the dominant portion first to begin with the friendly house is house number two house number two aspects are the family the elder siblings what you work what you are earning earning speech voice singing your complexion whatever you are born with the how you look all these things are matters of the first second house okay so whatever talents you're using in the five senses are also part of second house okay second house is also for your family your self-created family or which you were born in that is friendly so pisces typically has a friendly energy towards this okay next one is the fifth house which is ruled by moon cancer falls in the fifth house of a pisces ascendant so it's friendly towards this as well it is friendly towards sixth house as well so pisces has a friendly approach even to the enemies this can be a little tricky you can't be having friendly approach to enemies but pisces being ruled by jupiter it's always friendly at work they might find more friends at workplace 
you have to look at other planets and points don't take this literally okay you have to analyze the chart on an individual basis now ninth house also it finds friends so jupiter typically in sagittarius as ascendant in pisces as ascendant is always interested therefore in matters of wisdom as it is characteristic of jupiter to find be drawn towards knowledge of self higher knowledge of self higher self higher understanding higher philosophy foundational aspects of life is ninth house and 10th house also pisces ascendant finds friends they might find friends at workplaces they might find friends in their area as colleagues they might be friendly with their colleagues they might be having a teaching kind of energy with their colleagues pisces ascendant right the enemy houses become the house number 3 house number 3 is ruled by venus you see mercury and venus which is 2 6 3 and which one is the other one seven libra okay so house number 3 house number 3 is for younger siblings pisces and might, might have issues with younger siblings if they have they have issues with competition third house is a hard house it's a house of competition competition with your younger siblings competition with your peers peer group is house number 3 okay wherever you are cultivating skills this is hard work that's why house number 3 is a hard work house however they might find later in life as they get through their routines in house number 6 they might become knowledgeable through years maturity through years they also have enemies at the home front pisces ascendant has an issue with maybe mother maybe the homeland maybe the people of the homeland why who fourth house aspect is ruled by mercury so even if mercury sits here in gemini or in the 6th house of spouse again which is their enemy they might be having issues related to heart related to emotional connection with the spouse you see they might have to work on that they might have issues with occult and mysticism because it's an enemy house although pisces is the 12th house of spirituality they have somewhat issues with this I would necessarily use the word karma over here. It's not all about karma. It's not all about well this is what you got this is the crap you got to deal with in life. I disagree with such an approach. It is not empowering and you are always empowered. Everyone is. If you just got to find out which the areas of empowerment. That's why I call it conscious astrology. Yeah? You always have to come from a place of consciousness, from a place of understanding. Once you understand where you are, it will become easier to navigate this puzzle called human life, aka 2023 and going forward for all you young people. Okay. Next, we shall take up Saturn, and meanwhile, take care. Be awesome that you are.